In the previous video, we have modified our road prefabs. So let's go to the prefabs and open up one of the prefabs. And we can see that we have implemented markers on our roads. And those markers will be useful to us to depict the path that the pedestrian can travel on this particular road tile. The goal of placing those markers was to present points to the AI agents so we can achieve a realistic or more realistic behavior from the pedestrians so they walk through the crosswalk instead of through the center of the road. Now let me explain how we are going to find the closest points to generate our new graph from those points. Okay, so let's assume that we have our road. First one will be our dead end. Okay. Next one will be a straight road. I'm uh, drawing them at the distance so we have more uh, clearly we can see what is going on. Okay, we will have a four-way street here. And this has crosswalks on each side. And then we will have a dead end as our end position. I'm going to draw now our markers. So on our dead ends, we have three markers. On our straight street, we have two markers. On our corner, we have two markers. And on our four way, we have three markers. Uh, sorry, four markers. And at the end, on our dead end, we have three markers. So this is the path that was found for uh, by the first A star uh, on the general grid. So our agent would walk through the center of the uh, street using this uh, path. Now, next we will need to create a graph. So create a graph out of markers. So we are going to change the color. Starting from the first, since we can uh, enumerate those streets. Now, because of our marker class, we instantly know that those three markers on the first cell are connected. So this is our basic graph after the first step of analyzing this uh, cell zero. The next step after analyzing the uh, obvious connections is to check which of those markers is open for connections. So we have checked this in our settings. So we know that the closest to the end is not open for connections, but the remaining ones are open for connections. So the first check will be a simple check of the distance, since we know that our distance to this point is much closer than the diagonal distance to the second point. Okay, so we can assume that we are going to find those two connections, one and two, because we are going to analyze this point in a for loop, find me the connection, so this is connected to this marker, and if it is opened, take another road if exists, and if it does exist, find me the closest point from this to this road position to any of those markers. We are going to check those two distances and it will return us the shortest distance. So we have found those connections and this is our graph, the blue line. Now, first issue will be with the corner. Since with the corner, both of those connections, both of those markers, after analyzing, analyzing that they are open for connections, they will try finding the closest path on the corner. And with our first method of checking the distance, okay, so this is the first method, we are going to only find this one marker. Instead of this, we are going to use the second method of, we are going to find the direction from each marker to, uh, to the other marker. So for this one, we are going to find this direction and this direction. So then we are going to normalize them a quick update, we are not going to normalize the result direction since it will skew our results and give us a greater value than they should be. So, okay, let's continue. And we are going to achieve something like a very low value on one coordinate, so less than 0.3, for example. On Z, on Y value, it will be zero. And on Z, it will be a much bigger value like 0.8, for example. So what it will mean for us is that we can simply check if z value, uh, absolute value is less than 0.3, so our threshold, or if 
absolute value of x is less than our threshold point 3. And if this is the case, we have found the most straight vector, which will lead us to the point that we want to find. So this will mean that if our vector is this, it will have values like 0.4 and 0 and 0.6, for example. So this will not be the correct vector. So this is the second method that will allow us to connect those two points and those two points. Uh, it doesn't matter which if the corner is rotated like this or like this what we are seeing because we are going to check either the z value or the x value so we will always find the correct direction. So again from the corner to the four way there will be no issue finding those positions since this is the closest distance. We are going to have also those connected vertices from the properties of the marker class on this four way street. And the last issue, I'm going to use red now, is that we will find here from this four way to the dead end. Since our four way has four open four connections points, we are going to find the furthest, the furthest point to this closest point on our dead end, the closer point, and again, the same situation will be at the top. So we will have four connections. But we do not want to use those two points, so we do not want them. We only want to use those two points closest to our dead end. So we are going to have a third method, and we are going to find a four, point, uh, four connections, which will be represented by their distance, and we are going to first sort them, and then choose only two with shortest distance. So we are going to find at the end only those two connections between the closest points between the four way and the dead end or any other road prefab that we have. And then on our dead end we have this last connection. So to summarize what we will end up with is this graph here, 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 connect, connecting to the uh, corner. Then we are going to connect to the four way. The four way will have pre connected those four vertices. Next, we are going to find the, only those two connections from the closest points on our four way to the end road position. And from the end, uh, from the dead end, we are going to have those three, uh, those two edges between those vertices. And this will be our graph that our pedestrian will be able to use to traverse our path. And then last step will be just to use the third step, so A star algorithm on our new graph. And then we are going to find the closest or the shortest path between the start position and the end position. Okay. I hope it wasn't too complex. We are going to implement it now in our code. And you will be, uh, maybe, now we will implement this in our code, so maybe it will be become uh, more clear what is going on here. See you in the next video.